It is happening. The signs of the last day's prophecies are happening just as Bible prophecy foretold. And it's revealing that we are nearing the end of this age of grace and the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ for his church. And this signs of the last day's ministry is here, watching with you and praying with you as we get ready now for that appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church. Thank you so much for being a part of this Signs of the Last Days ministry community, praying and giving to support this ministry to be here and to continue and to declare the nearing appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ. There's Middle East news where the red flag of blood revenge has been raised over Iran's holy mosque. That is a symbol of the evil spirit prince of Persia, Iran, and its desire to avenge itself upon Israel, which will lead the world to the fulfillments of the last day's prophecies of the Holy Bible. The chilling sight appeared over the Holy Dome of the Jamkaran Mosque in Qom, Iran where the red flag of blood revenge was raised over the dome of the mosque, calling for vengeance over Muslim blood that was spilled by the enemies of Islam. This red flag of blood revenge has written on it those who want to avenge the blood and was raised this time over the Muslim holy dome in Iran in response to Israel killing Ishmael Hanai, the top leader of Hamas, while he was in Iran, where he was attending that day the inauguration of Iran's new president, Iran's Ayatollah Khamenei, the top leader of Iran's Mullah regime, has sworn vengeance on Israel for this killing in the heart of Tehran, the capital of Iran, with him calling for the Islamic Revolutionary Guard and its allies to take vengeance on Israel. The dome of the Jamkaran Mosque is considered holy to Muslims as it is dedicated to the Imam al-Mahdi, referred to by Shias as the final Imam, whom they believe will return as the last Imam, as their Muslim Messiah, who will kill all infidels in a holy war, establishing the Muslim Caliphate rule of the world. Flags are a significant part of Shi'ite Muslim traditions, especially in rituals of mourning, with the red flag in Shi'ite tradition symbolizing Muslim blood spilled, they say unjustly, and it serves as a call to avenge the blood of the person who was slain. And this raising of the red flag of blood revenge is making a global call to all Muslims, especially Shia, to avenge the spilling of Muslim blood by Israel. And with the red flag of blood revenge raised over the holy dome of the Jamkaran Mosque, this makes the vengeance as part of the Imam al-Mahdi's holy war against infidels, which the Shiites of Iran think of this conflict in the terms of eternal conflict, following their belief from the Quran that Allah is with those who have patience, meaning that they will work patiently, no matter how long it takes to get their vengeance on Israel. And this red flag of blood revenge was previously raised over the holy dome of the Jamkaran Mosque when the top general of Iran, over the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, his name was Qasim Soleimani. He was killed by U.S. President Trump with a drone strike in Iraq four years ago. So Trump, along with Israel, 
are both under Iran's red flag of revenge. And just days ago, a Muslim man from Pakistan was arrested in the United States, charged with working with Iran and planning the assassination of President Trump. And this was a part <clears throat> of Iran's brazen and unrelenting efforts under Iran's red flag of blood revenge to retaliate against American officials for the killing of Iranian General Soleimani, so to avenge his blood, which they will continue. Their efforts to kill Trump are other involved U.S. government officials, so to avenge Soleimani under the blood red flag of, re of revenge, just as they will also likewise continue their efforts of revenge against Israel. Iran's ayatollahs and presidents, they believe that they are to bring in the end of days so that their Shia Messiah will appear and establish the global Islamic kingdom known as the Caliphate. And they believe that the way to hasten the coming of their final Imam is to take vengeance on Israel, whom they call the little Satan, and to defeat the United States, the ally of Israel, which they call the great Satan. And the Iranian government's Islamic clerical leadership their policy is totally driven by this overarching belief and mission. And that is because modern day Iran is the territory of and filled with the bloodline descendants of ancient Persia. And it is the ancient spirit prince of Persia that rules over the territory of Persia, Iran to this day. The Holy Bible teaches that leaders of nations are the horn pointing the way toward either righteousness or evil for the land. And Ephesians, the sixth chapter of the Holy Bible tells us that principalities on earth are connected to spirit powers. And those spirit powers determine the nature of nations as they are princes or governing spirits either for good or evil over a nation of people. And a spirit like the evil prince of Persia is what gives you a government like in Iran today, which continues with a single-minded focus to oppose and fight against Israel and her allies and take their vengeance on Israel. It is revealed in Daniel chapter 10 of the Holy Bible that it has always been the goal of the spirit prince of Persia to oppose and fight against Israel. And that since those events in Daniel chapter 10, where Michael, the spirit prince of the Lord over Israel, defeated the spirit prince of Persia, the desire of the spirit prince of Persia has been since then to take revenge on Israel. That's why the Ayatollah, and the mullahs, along with their Islamic guard forces in Iran, are maniacs possessed with a need to get revenge on Israel. This need to get revenge on Israel is driven by the evil spirit prince of Persia. So they will not stop. They will not be deterred. The need for this controls them and their government and everything that they do. But it is also what always seems to be just out of their reach. As always, again and again, they seem to always be thwarted from getting the satisfaction of their vengeance on Israel. Why? Because Daniel chapter 10 reveals that Michael, the spirit prince of the Lord over Israel. In Daniel chapter 10, he overcame the spirit prince of Persia. That's why Persia has been and will be unsuccessful in getting the satisfaction of their vengeance upon Israel in directly attacking and invading Israel. 
That's why Iran fired over 300 drones and missiles at Israel already once this year, and not one of them got through. The Lord has got that covered by Michael. And that's why today, everything to do with opposing and fighting Israel, Iran prefers to not do that, not do that themselves, but to do that instead through their proxies being in the forefront, like Hezbollah of Tyre and Sidon in southern Lebanon, with Iran not taking on Israel directly. Oh no, they tried that before in Daniel chapter 10, and it did not go well for them. And that's why Persia, Iran, in Ezekiel chapter 38 prophecy, will also follow behind Gog of Magog as their leader, as their proxy, to attack Israel, but even then they will also fail miserably to take their vengeance on Israel when their armies are destroyed after trying to invade Israel. We also know from Daniel chapter 10 that it, that it is Michael the prince of Daniel's people who also upholds those who come to the aid of Israel to support Israel. That's why when Iran launched those ballistic missiles into that U.S. base in Iraq, launching those missiles onto the top of 1,500 U.S. troops in that base for the purpose to get revenge for the death of Soleimani, which Iran did that attack under the red flag of revenge. But after the attack of those missiles, then the U.S. troops came out of that saying that they were shocked by the intensity of the missile attack, but they were also shocked that no U.S. troops were killed, with the troops saying that it was a miracle of God. But that is also why in the Ezekiel chapter 38 and chapter 39 prophecy event, that when the Nations of the West, thinking that they live in security in their coastlands and who are afraid to confront Magog Russia of the Prince of Rush directly concerning Israel. And when they do not come to the support of Israel to protect her borders, that then they will also suffer the same fire of judgment sent down upon their heads as will also come down upon the heads of Magog Russia as described in the Ezekiel 39 prophecy. But this red flag of blood revenge, Middle East experts such as Dr. Mordecai Kedar, an Israeli scholar of Arab culture and senior lecturer in the Department of Arabic at Bar Ilan University, he emphasizes that this symbol of the red flag of blood revenge, that it cannot be overestimated, where he explains that the red flag means that they plan to sink all their enemies in a sea of blood, as it is a call of vengeance for the deaths of everyone whom they think oppose Shiite Islam. It is truly that red flag is truly a global call to holy war. And this spirit symbolized in the red flag of blood revenge, the evil spirit prince of Persia, Iran, that is driven to avenge itself on Israel, will push the world toward the fulfillments of the last day's prophecies of the Holy Bible where Iran will push the Arab resistance to Israel to unify and will, through her support, Iran will see her Arab proxies, will see them all attack Israel together with the goal to cut Israel off from being a nation so that the name of Israel may be remembered no more. And although it will at first seem like they may succeed, yet again, they are thwarted to get vengeance on Israel. Yet again, they will fail to destroy Israel. And the Arab Confederacy, supported by Iran, will suffer such a major defeat that all 
Arab resistance to Israel will forever be burned up, according to the prophecy of Asaph of Psalm 83. And that will then open the door to where Persia, Iran will come with Gog of Magog as they will plan to directly invade Israel. Where although it seems that they have, that they will have an imposing, overpowering force to invade the small, peaceful Israel, who at that time has no one else standing up for them at that time to defend them against Gog of Magog. Yet again, Persia, Iran, with Magog, Russia, they will fail to successfully invade Israel as the Lord God himself in his fury commands nature to discomfit and destroy their armies on the mountains of Israel according to the Ezekiel 38 prophecy. And in Ezekiel 39, we'll have fire sent down on Magog, Russia for attempting to invade Israel and also have it sent down upon the west for thinking they live in security in their coastlands and who did not come to Israel's aid to defend them. <clears throat> and then the fight with the evil spirit prince of Persia that had been stirring up trouble for so long in the Middle East will then be finished. And indeed, then the spirit prince of Greece will come, which as Ezekiel 39 describes, it will lead Israel and the nations into a time of seven where Israel will enter, will enter into a time of seven, where for seven months, fires of cleansing will come to Israel. And also Israel will enter into a covenant time of seven years, a time of seven that will prepare and gather the nations of the world together for the supper of God, that the birds may feast on the princes of the earth and their mighty men of war so that the nations may see the judgment and glory of the Lord God. And to where the judgment and reconciliation of Israel will be finished, to where the Lord God is hallowed in them in the sight of many nations. And he will not hide his face from Israel anymore. As the Lord pours out his spirit upon the house of Israel, as it is described in Ezekiel chapter 39. And this spirit, symbolized now in this red flag of blood revenge driven by the evil spirit prince of Persia, Iran, that wants to avenge itself on Israel, will lead and push the world to the fulfillments of the last day's prophecies of the Holy Bible. And what we are seeing now, with this red flag of blood revenge, it is a sign, a symbol, of the signs of the last day's prophecies, warning us that these events and conditions that are happening now, <clears throat> they are warning signs, <clears throat> pointing us to the nearing fulfillment of the last day's prophecies at the end of this age, revealing that it's time to prepare now for the nearing appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church by being born again into the kingdom of God as Lord Jesus Christ commanded that we must. In John chapter 3, verse 3, and John chapter 3 and verse 5, that we must be born again as his apostles authorized and sanctioned by Lord Jesus. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 18 through 19, described how in the acts of their preaching, in the acts of the apostles, chapters 2, 8, 10 and 19. And if you would like help finding someone in your area where you're located to biblically pray for you and baptize you according to the acts of the preaching of Jesus and his apostles actually in the Bible, you can contact us here at Signs of the Last Days Ministry to help you find someone in your area. Our contact information is down at the very bottom of our website. Our website is signsofthelastdays.org. And in the footer at the very bottom of the page in the smaller print, you'll find there our email address. Just email us with the name of your town, your state, and also your zip code. The zip code is very helpful. Email us 
that information with your request and we'll be glad to respond and to help you like we have helped scores and scores of others across the United States and in other countries. The prophecies are coming true. The perilous times are here and the need is greater than ever before to declare the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. If each of our viewers would give a donation as the Lord leads you, no matter the amount, you'll help to ensure that the signs of the last day's ministry continues to declare the signs of biblical prophecy leading to the appearance of the Lord Jesus Christ for his church. And we thank you so much for that. On our website, signsofthelastdays.org, on the giving page, you can securely give there. You're offering whatever amount that the Lord leads you to give. As you become a part of this ministry, helping us to continue sharing more signs of the last days of biblical prophecy. Please be watching for our next videos and also for our next Watch and Pray live stream. As our Watch and Pray live stream broadcasts on Sunday evenings, where we have a prophetic word from the Lord then to share with our last day's church of more signs of the last day's prophecies that are happening now in the world. Please make sure you're subscribed to and following this channel. Click that bell to get all notifications for our live streams and videos so that you'll know on Sunday evening when we are coming on to declare the signs of the last day's prophecies in the Watch and Pray live stream broadcast. And the end time prophecies, the signs of those last day's prophecies are showing us now that we are nearing the end of this age and that time is growing short. Please join us then in the Watch and Pray live stream. Thank you. Signs of the times are everywhere. There's a brand new feeling in the air. Keep your eyes upon the eastern sky.